Hey everybody, this is just a recap of what happened in class number four for the uh, Foster to Adopt classes. Um, the main theme of this last class, and I'm sorry that it's been so long, today's Monday and we had class last Thursday, but stuff's been going on, so I didn't get a chance to do it this weekend. Um, the main thing that was talked about was attachment and the lack thereof and the problems that um, can come if it's all not handled properly. And basically they just use an example of, um, you know, a child attaches to their parent and is then removed from that parent's care. And if the foster parent doesn't handle the relationship with the parent appropriately, it can actually cause the foster child to pull away from the foster parent and not able to attach properly. So basically it was just another example of why it's so important to have you know, contact with the birth parents and the birth family, um, you know, if there's not a dad, a mom, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, sisters, everybody. So that's, again, um, you know, just really important. And I, I think I kind of understand more than I did before the importance of the birth family, which is good, I think. Um, that was pretty much it. We went over a few case studies each time we do, like, little group work um, where we break up, read some case studies and <clears throat> excuse me, and things that, you know, how you'd handle certain situations and things like that. Um, we stayed after and spoke with one of the facilitators there who is actually a person for Wendy's Wonderful Kids, just to talk a little bit about what kind of kids, because the kids that she has are kids that are freed for adoption. So we talked a little bit to her about the kids that she has available that are freed, um, she does not have any infant or toddlers that do not have serious medical issues, and most of the kids she has are teenagers. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We know just from, um, you know, my husband and I have talked about this quite a bit, about the kind of kids, I don't mean kind, kind but like the age of the kids that we really want. Um, we do not want teenagers just because I don't feel, um, having never been parents before, that that would be the first kind of kid I would want to foster or adopt. Um, maybe as we get into this a little bit and we have other kids or whatever, um, we'll talk about that. I'm not sure. Um, but basically she said that she has, like for example, she has a baby that has needed multiple surgeries. They're not sure if it's going to live or not. You know, things like that. And that's definitely not something that we're looking into getting into. Um, you know, God bless people that can do that. Um, but especially because I don't think I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom, something like that, I think it's very difficult to um, do unless you're going to be able to be there for the child all the time. So we're looking probably at like zero to five years of age. <clears throat> Excuse me. We originally had thought zero to ten, but the more we look into it, we really think we want a younger child. So we're looking more at the zero to five. Um, encouraging news was that just that week they had placed three childs. One was, or three children, sorry. Um, they were very young. One was like six weeks old. One was, I think like eight years old and one was like 16 months or something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, they, I don't, they probably were not freed for adoption. They probably were just, um, not, um, they probably were just taken away and just foster carers in foster care at first. Um, I don't know. We've we've really gone back and forth about this because in the meetings, they tend to really focus on the negative. And I think that there's a couple reasons for that. Um, first of all, you know, they want to prepare you for what can potentially happen. And, you know, that's good to, to be prepared for that. And, and somebody brought up the point, you know, we never really talk about any positive or success type stories. <clears throat> and I think that that's important because you need to, I mean, even though you need to be prepared for the worst, you need to understand that there are good things that can come out of this. Um, you know, my, my husband and I have talked a little bit more about, because you can just be an adoptive parent, which means you'd only be offered children that are freed for adoption. You basically foster them for six months. And then as long as everything goes okay and there's no problems, the paperwork goes through and you, you can adopt them. Um, so we've talked about that, but of course the problem with that is that there are no kids generally that are young that are just freed for adoption and not adopted. 
Um, because usually what happens is people that foster those children when they're first children when they're first removed from their family's house are the ones that end up wanting to adopt them. So um, that's why we had originally thought about foster care, um, about being foster parents, because then if we specify the age limit that we want to have in our home, if those specific kids become freed for adoption, then we get we have basically first dibs on them, for lack of a better term. Um, <clears throat> so we're still at this point not really sure exactly how we're going to handle this. And the good news is you can always, you know, when they call you and say they have a child available and they give you whatever information that they have on the child, you can always decide not to bring that child in. Which is, I mean, that's good because my husband and I don't feel comfortable having someone with serious medical issues just because we don't feel like, um, I, I think that that's maybe more of something that like a stay-at-home mom should be able to handle because obviously there's a lot of doctor's appointments and things like that. Um, we don't really mind, and I hope I'm not rambling on here, but we don't really mind kids that have like, for example, I have asthma. I would not mind at all a child that has asthma or a child that had diabetes or, you know, something that was able to be controlled with medication or something like that that didn't need constant um, care. But they've talked about like children on ventilators and things like that. That's really not something that we feel comfortable doing. Um, so we're just, it's just kind of an ongoing thing. I mean, we just want to basically finish the class, have our home study, and then really just sit down after we have all the information that they give us in our classes. Um, you know, once we have all that information, we'll sit down and kind of really decide where our parameters are and what we feel comfortable with versus what we don't. Um, and I think that that's possible that it can change as well because if we are able to conceive on our own, if we're able to conceive a baby, we're not going to be as particular about having a baby. You know, if we can't, then we feel more particular in wanting a baby. So, um, I don't know, just a lot of variables out there. Pretty much we're just going through the class, getting certified, and then we'll make all decisions afterwards. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think if anything else important really happened in the classes. We really have not stayed after, I mean, we stayed after talk just for a moment about the, to the different, the, the different kids available. The other thing we're thinking of doing is because she, she specifically said that she was not national and she can hook you up with somebody that is national. I think that that's probably something we're definitely going to talk more about. We really feel more comfortable going with somewhere that is national just because it really adds to the number of kids available. In our specific area, I don't, because, again, they don't really give you this information, like, what is available in our specific area, other than I know that what we want is not what's available. But I know in other areas where, unfortunately, um, there are way more kids in the, the system and, you know, different judges do different things, there are more infants and toddlers that are available for adoption that are freed for adoption that don't have adoptive parents. So if we go national, I feel like we have more of a chance to maybe get more of what we're looking for but I don't really know and that's just something I guess we just have to wait for it all to be done with um, I'm just checking out the time here um, just a quick update on our house we really have not done anything else um, we kind of talked a little bit about buying furniture and stuff but we really haven't gone anywhere with that just because first of all the rooms aren't done and second of all, we're really not sure exactly what we want to do. So I just don't want to buy a bunch of stuff, decide it's not what we want, and then whatever. I don't know. Nothing's really changed, but um, we just kind of don't want to jump the gun too much. So we're just going to continue to work on the house, get the rooms actually done. And then once the classes are over and we decide exactly what we want, we'll buy beds or whatever to fill those needs. And hopefully, I mean, the class does end in the middle of June, but hopefully um, we will have some kind of positive news from our fertility specialist to let us know kind of where we're aiming. So um, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's having a nice week, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.